What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 19 of Table Cheese. I'm your host, Anton. Joining me, we don't have the usual D, but we have a different D in Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me all the way from the Rest of Rupees podcast. How's it going, Darren? Good, Anton. It's been good, my boy. We've been out here chilling, bro. How are you doing this fine evening? Man, I'm tired, but also motivated, so, you know. You're here. <laughs> Uh, so one of the things on table cheese, I feel like when I have guests on table cheese, it's just kind of like, you've heard the name a bunch of times. So let's put a face to the name. Let's put a voice to the name, depending on how you're (laughs) consuming this. But I've brought you up, Darren, and I've brought up the Rusty Rupees a bunch of times for anybody listening to table cheese who doesn't know, who are you? Who who are the rupees? Hi, hi. I, I am Darren. I am from the Rup- the Rusty Rupees podcast. Uh, you can follow me anywhere at XX Shadow Kami XX on things. That's me. Um, but basically, uh, the rupees we do we do the same shit as you guys, bro. <laughs> Out here bringing you gaming content. We try to do week to week episodes. We're bad at that sometimes, but um, catch us daily over at Twitch.tv slash Rusty Rupees, where every day we're streaming something. Something one of us, uh, one of me, or the three other boys, or will be streaming something. We be on Tekken on Tuesdays, just having a good time. Um, we also talk anime sometimes, trying to get better with that. We have plans <laughs> going forward with the year to try to make things more, I'll say, concise amongst the streams. Trying to switch things up, just just do more. We're trying to do more this year for sure. But yeah, um, well, we've been doing this now for what is it? three four years now too yeah i I, mean you guys have really been like watching you guys go from like (laughs) darren's like can we do this to like yeah no we doing this shit we own it (laughs) yeah man it's like i think after the pandemic hit that's like it slowed down a lot for us yeah everything slowed down but it's like it it slowed down a momentum that i had just gotten Oh yeah. So like right beforehand, um I had gone to PAX East for the first time and um was working a bit in media, had to had a chance to talk to some devs and everything like that, and it was just me there, um, out of the four of us, and so I was tired as hell, busy as hell. But when I came back, I came back it re revitalized. I'm like, We are doing this shit, let's go. <laughs> the world closes. So I was like, damn it. And then um last year me and the boys went to PAX West in Seattle. Got uh got media passes for that. Went around, talked, mingled. After parties are dope. Like, <laughs> and now all of us have that fire under our ass of like, oh yeah, we doing this. We meeting people. We making friends. We we this get yeah, this shit. Despite this... all the volatile nature that is the gaming industry, right? Stuff like that is it. It's good to be amongst peers that like and enjoy the things that you do doesn't matter the facet so it's 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 fun it's good yeah time, that's something d and i have talked about is like doing con stuff especially here in atlanta like just there's just so many cons and d seems to do a lot more of going and like hanging out with cosplayers i i just i don't go places man <laughs> i feel that i feel that and it was hard to it was hard to start getting out there again because i definitely was was there too of yeah, I don't want to. I don't. I don't, don't want to. But right. then, once you get back out there and kind of remember, oh yeah, this is what it's like to interact with people, and especially when, like, when it's going to cons and you know, whether it's through Twitch, Twitter, however we, we mingle with our people, even if it's just like those small interactions we have online, putting a face to that to that username and actually being a like, hey, you. I'm such and such, and I've been fought. Fo- hey, it's nice to finally meet you. And then, you know, a conversation strikes up, and then by the end of it, it's just like, wow, they were they were the cool person I thought they were. Right. Instead of that, you know, you know, sometimes they're like, it's cool, a roll of the dice, you know. Some every, it is. <laughs> every. But uh, just getting out there and just getting a chance to talk to those people again, it's it's dope. Y'all need to go for these goddamn media badges too. If it has it, just apply, man. Just apply. You you. It, if you don't get it, cool, you don't get it. If you do, hey, look, that's 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 some money best saved in your pocket and some more opportunities to just meet people that you might have not had a chance to meet otherwise. Well, yeah, and I think D has done media passes. It's just 
Yeah. And I know Madrid, like, Momocon went away for a while. Like, we had Momocon online on Twitch, which was just bizarre. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, 2023, a lot more cons. Just because seeing you guys go to things, like, seeing you guys at the Game Awards, I was just like... (laughs) (laughs) Man, that was... that, That in itself was still surreal and like um when we were talking about it when we were recording like Deontay's just like i don't feel like i shouldn't be here and did that feeling (laughs) that doesn't go away (laughs) when you see people who you respect in the industry when you see oh oh there's reggie fils is that sean layton look at his hair oh my god his hair's grown out oh my god hey greg good to see you again sir is that greg kirkhope like just looking any which away is and you see somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody and it's like why am i here and then even the people you don't recognize it's like you talk to a random person it's like oh yeah i'm a community manager for final fantasy 14 or some shit be like what the fuck that was um yeah there was a couple people like that where we just started striking up conversations and then by the end of it it's just like oh yeah i'm the community manager for this or i'm the production manager on this game or oh i've worked on this and it's like oh you're fucking cool bro (laughs) right anytime i talk to dev i'm always in awe of like devs are just like it's just like you'll see some regular dude and he's like oh yeah well like, I talked to this one guy uh, last time I went to the Georgia Game Developers Association. They had, like, a presentation thing they were doing. And I went, and there's this guy. He's like, yeah, I work on a lot of games that have M. Like, he's like, I've worked on Madden. I've worked on, like, he just listed off, like, a yeah. bunch of games that started with M. And I'm just like, yeah, but, like, standing out, like, Madden? Like, just some dude is, yeah. like, you're working on coding for just all these different studios, all these different publishers. And, yeah. So, that's how I always feel when I'm around devs. It's just, like, I, mm-hmm. I've i messed around in Unity. Like, I know I can't do what you guys are doing and what right. you guys are doing. <laughs> it, just like, produces the thing that I love so much. So, yeah. It's, like, and I think with the opportunities we've been getting it's it's a special feeling when you feel like when like they're showing you their game it's just like oh here's what this is here's the story here's the background blah 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 when we try it out and they ask so what do you think and oh just like this is good i think that this the timing on this would be a little bit better and blah, blah. and you see them taking notes on stuff and it's just like oh that, that oh yeah is... uh oh, play te- okay. i don't know if you've ever done any play testing but like uh madrid and i have done play testing and it was like really cool just like sit down play the game however you feel like we have controller we have mouse and keyboard yeah uh you have uh i don't even think discord was like prevalent then but they had like in-game voice chat for like everybody on your team and all that stuff and then it's like all right you play the game for like a couple hours we got a couple different game modes couple different maps like Mm -hmm. and then they take you into like a meeting room and they're like, okay, so you, what'd you think? And it's like, would you play with what you think? So like, of course me, I'm like, yeah, I use the PlayStation controller and I, uh, didn't mess with any of my settings. Cause like the one dude, he's like, yeah, I immediately went in and changed my key binds and stuff. So I think like having that, a dev who's directly working on the game that you just played that's not out yet Mm -hmm. it's a really cool feeling of doing that absolutely yeah yeah and you guys are in sf just go to ubisoft knock on the door and be like hey (laughs) can i play amen amen i'm like you i'm like we got yosef right there we i'm like we'd be like hey yosef how's it going bro but (laughs) i don't i don't want to play that stuff with you I'm okay. <laughs> they gotta impress me right now. <laughs> they got a lot to prove. Yeah. There are certain things, but I think I'd have to be in Japan to play test the things that I really want to play test. I'm like, give me this early. Give me this broken. Let's get it right. <laughs> Goes to Capcom, because uh, Capcom is maybe 
one of their headquarters is like a 20 30 minute drive from here like like there's a lot over here because in driving distance it's like 2k is a uh, nintendo and redwood city playstation metcap like there's there's a lot rogue <laughs> games shout out rogue games your after party was dope love you guys need to hit them back but <laughs> super giants uh, out there too i know yeah, um, <clears throat> I think Darren McCorb is out in Berkeley, and I'm just like, that is a Bart ride for me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, it's it, it's cool, man. Just the opportunities that we're that we've been just trying to pursue and make something out of it. Like I'm, we're already trying to plan for Pax East and everything, and our biggest misstep is just not handling our work aspect of it <laughs> at a time. <laughs> Because it's like when you're there and you're like there's going to be that free time of try whatever you want because you don't have appointments or then get to the appointments where you do have and then those actual appointments. Okay, now that this is stuff we have to make content for. So this is what we need to make sure we hammer in. Okay, we played this game for this long. What was it about? What did we like about it? What didn't we like about it? Send them this stuff that we did. (laughs) And... Our mistake was we didn't do all of this until we came back, and that led to a three-hour episode (laughs) instead of bite-sized chunks of, all right, here's this for you, send email. Here's this for you, send email. Here's this for you. So it's like managing our time and all that is like, okay. Right. Having somebody like if you guys just had somebody who'd follow you guys with the camera and just be like, all right, mic'd up. Let's go. Two minutes here. That's like the ideal. That was the whole like streaming out of a box. Like got a laptop in the bag. Flip it up. We got our mic. We got our camera. We got like small decorations. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So we going to be more prepared. It's going to be cold. It's fucking (laughs) Boston. But I'm, I'm excited still. I'm excited. When this cold this year has been insane. Speaking of cold, in... ugh, ugh, we ugh, got ugh. Velcana coming to Monster Hunter Rise. And so, D doesn't play Monster Hunter or Final Fantasy. And I have you oh. here. Hi, friend. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hello, brother. <laughs> to finally have somebody to help me preach the good word of Final Fantasy fourteen and Monster Hunter. Just Absolutely. Monster Hunter in general. Monster Hunter is the binding glue that started a, <laughs> right? a, this amazing friendship. <laughs> but yes, uh, Velcana is is coming to rise. Yeah, as of next week, we um, had the this. digital event. What was that? Tuesday? Uh, as of Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. So we had the digital event. They showed Velcana right off the bat. They opened with the trailer. They showed Velcana and Risen. Crimson uh, Glow uh, Valstrax. Right? So, okay, okay. On the offset, I know we're, we're excited to talk about Monster Hunter, but let me now be the Debbie Downer. Do you care about this update, brother? Do you care? <laughs> I'm not going to play it <laughs> until it comes okay. to PlayStation. There so we go. I'm excited like <clears throat> for when Sunbreak drops and Velcana will be on the roadmap of things I got to go kill but i mean i'm definitely like i'm not in sunbreak on pc i don't even think i have the sunbreak expansion on pc Mm -hmm. i think i just have base rise and on switch you know yeah yeah, day one we we was there well that's the thing on switch we were all there day one but now i've played it at 4k 60 frames per second and there is no way there's no way there's there's no way i haven't touched i haven't touched my switch to play monster hunter since it's been released aside to look at my character and make sure i made the same character but besides that i have no desire to go back to this inferior version it's like even even the the novelty of it being handheld for me as i as we've been playing rise i've had it docked i'm just using my pro controller Monster Hunter Rise has not been that comfort layback Switch game for me at right. all. So now that I just don't care about that aspect of it in general, and it's just my game look good, my game run good, lo- it loads in an instant. Give me all of that, please. That now. Right. 
And that's the thing, like, the only time I think I've played Monster Hunter handheld was, like, a random day. Uh, Jalen Madrid and I went to Monday night, and we just uh, took our Switches and played Monster Hunter and drank beer out in the sun. It was a nice, mm-hmm. like, Sunday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> But outside of that, yeah, same deal. Like, I mean, my Switch is 99.9% of the time in the dock. If it's in handheld mode, it's for something extremely specific. Mm -hmm. Like, I think aside from certain games, I use my Switch more of a handheld system. Like, Pokemon is all handheld. Bayonetta, when I was playing through those, handheld that whole time. Fire Emblem. I'm probably not going to play a docked at all. Like, unless it's like Smash Brothers, Mario Kart. Like, I don't care. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, for me, I don't know. My. Oh, I know why. I know why specifically for me, because I have an OLED. So, oh. the only benefit of having an OLED <laughs> is by using a handheld. And yeah. so, I'm going to use that. I every time I see like a picture of an OLED or I just see an OLED like in action, I'm like, damn, I want to upgrade, but I also don't want to pay. Like, if I could get an OLED for free, right? Like, I th- I think the OLED is a great s- system. I I will continuously bitch and moan about Nintendo and how the Switch should be better, not extremely better, not on ps5 xbox status of better right. just better than what it is now that's 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 all that's all we're asking on just par at least with the steam deck because the steam deck isn't pushing 4k 60 oh, it isn't but but that processor that it's got is kicking i'm like i don't know if nintendo will go that far but if it's just a step if it's a step below even the base steam deck hey that's that's way better than what's this what switch is working for and it's like... And I mean, I have the base Steam Deck, so for me, it's yeah. just, like, what the Steam Deck is. I haven't ever even interacted with the high-end Steam Deck, so mm-hmm. for me, it's just... what yeah. the, <laughs> the base Steam Deck is the but Steam Deck. even what you have... Yeah, but what you have, way better than Switch, right? Yeah, dude. That's, so that's... <laughs> right, and that's what I'm saying. Like, just give us a decent handheld... Like, give it, like... Because this is an NVIDIA chip. Like, the Steam Deck's not even on an NVIDIA chip. The You could just do, like, DLSS and just call New it a day. Nintendo Switch. Done. Right. There you go. Super you go. Nintendo Switch. Super Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Nintendo cool. Switch 2. Any, like... <laughs> Nintendo Switch DS. Like, I want to say, just make it 300, uh, 350... Lower the OLED to be the base model model at 300. Keep the light where it is. Eliminate the regular switch. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They do that. I'd be happy and buy two more. (laughs) (laughs) I got a lot of goddamn switches, but I'm not buying another OLED. That's for damn sure. But That Tears of the Kingdom one ain't got you. No. That's what made me mad. The fact that it said OLED next to that is what made me. That's what made me believe it's that like, it was real. Damn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like people were just like, "Oh, I think this is fake." It it says OLED. That's what makes it real because that's some Nintendo ass shit to not make it a new system. Right. Because that was the thing of like Nintendo has to do something at some point, and that's just everybody's just like, "Okay, Nintendo." At some point, you have to do something, and there's a there's an answer right here, like just Absolutely. a switch, but better. That's all you have to do, and you'll sell just as many as you did last time again. Right. So again, just, just do it. Just do it. Don't don't Wii U this. Like the Wii from the Wii to the Wii U, it's like the Wii sold a shit ton. Yes. Everybody had a Wii. Like Wiis are still. <laughs> perfect like you can still there i guarantee you there are people in this world that still have a wii hooked up in 2023 and use it on a regular basis absolutely absolutely so anybody who tells me who's using a wii right now you're lying right and so just don't do that again the last thing we need is to switch you 
We don't need y'all to take the switch. Not like, the switch up. <laughs> I, I don't need like you. <laughs> Nintendo is uh, just like, we don't need you making Nintendo decisions with this next. Switch. Yeah, I don't hardware. think I don't think we'll get that. Like they know that the Switch prints money. Like they exactly that. It's just the we printed me. money and they fumbled the bag. They fumbled the bag so hard that shit is on GameCube level. They went from GameCube, Wii, Wii U, Switch. Like the the Wii U had to stumble down a hill so it could launch off of a ramp and fly as the Switch. It had to just bump it, bump it, bump it, bump it. Ah, like. <laughs> Right, but we see this time and time again in the games industry of, like, last gen, you were on top. You made the better decisions. You had the better console. And then for whatever, because you were cocky because you sold over 100 million of that system, the next one, you were just like, fuck y'all. We sold 100 million of the last one. You're going to buy this one, even though it's shit. So is this a new country? Oh, can I use that for my Wii? Oh, this is a whole new console. Oh, really? How much is it? Three hundred. Ew. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ew. Can it play my all the games on Wii? Not all of them. Some of them. A good amount of them. You could use your Wii modes. Right. But what's the big pad controller for? <laughs> <laughs> it's a map. Like, oh, it's an inventory. Uh... All right. I remember cool. the first person who like was asking me about buying a system. They were like, "Yeah, I'm thinking of buying a Wii U," and I was like, "Just buy a Vita. Like, if you're just gonna, if you're just trying to buy some shit, <laughs> just buy a Vita." Because the Wii so. U was cons like current, and Vita was this was before the Vita Slim even. I was just what like, "What year did the Vita come out?" I want to say like 2010. Because I'm like. I bought, I'm like, I remember I bought that day one. I think that was 2011 or early 2012. Because I think the Vita and Wii U came out relatively close to each other. Right. And, and so, I'm just like, like, damn, how did they both fumble the bag like that? Ugh. Ugh. That was a dark time in gaming. <laughs> you know, well, now that I'm really thinking about it, I was like, damn, before 2013, that 2010 to 2013 span was whoop. <laughs> It was for a lot of game studios, man. It is not think... like 2020 and beyond where we're we're sitting pretty. We okay. We got into the PlayStation firmware beta for the new <laughs> firmware Thanks, update. One. Appreciate you, bro. <laughs> yeah, shout out Oni No RX. Lightning Blade 14. <laughs> no, no. Know. If you know, you know. <laughs> Right, kitty? But, uh, so, Juwan sent out the codes to everybody. Uh, he got a beta code, and he's like, yeah, it says share it with up to five of your friends. And this is the update that's finally bringing Discord to PlayStation. We knew it's been coming for a while. Uh, PlayStation actually partnered with Discord before Microsoft did. But somehow it came out on Xbox. I think right. it's app development's easier on Xbox. I would assume so. Just the just the basic PC aspects of the Xbox makes it a little bit easier. Right. But because they've had it what for a good six months now. Yeah, they've had it for a while, and I mean, for, cool for the minute. most part, all the bugs are worked out. Because I tested it for a couple hours. Like I got home probably two hours before we linked up to record. So. Mm -hmm. I was testing it, was playing the Guilty Gear uh, cross-network beta, and we had Aber in the chat, and we had me and Madrid on PlayStation. Okay, so cause, since you guys got a chance to um, try it out with other people, because uh, when me and Juwan tried it, it was last night, and we just uh, hopped in the um, Discord call together just to see. We were like, okay, okay, this works. Okay, cool. This is how we can swap through it. Mm -hmm. um, so how does it... So is it still in that base that uh Discord uh chat where you just see everybody would just be there? Yeah, you mean like so we started I just hopped into the voice chat. So when I got it this morning, I got the code, downloaded the firmware update, restarted, hopped into a voice chat by myself in the server and then just hit the transfer to PlayStation button. Everything came over. My PlayStation's like, you're muted. I'm like, I know. That's that's intentional. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, I was just in there by myself and I was like, it's working. Everything's cool. It seems like right now the limitation that we have on PlayStation that Xbox originally had as a limitation but doesn't have anymore is you have to have a host device. Yeah, so because I know you can do it from you can hop in the party um, through either your phone or the or the desktop app right. um, for the PlayStation. But I know on Xbox, uh, like when I've been over to visit my brother and seeing it on Xbox, like it just says start Discord call. Like, right. It, that has a setting on on the Xbox, and I'm like, why doesn't PlayStation have that? Not yet. Mm-hmm. Soon come. Because that scene, that like that's what I thought it was. Um, cause once I saw on the Xbox, I was like, oh, that's dope. You just link up your discord and everything. So I was thinking maybe you're able to see the channels, um, no. that way, but I guess not yet. So no, not yet. Definitely not yet. Like the options are super limited as far as like, oh yeah, what you can even do with the discord call. But the fact that it just works and it shows up First like steps. a card, Mm-hmm. But uh, the one thing, uh, Madrid and I were just getting random DCs. Like, it would just say there's Mm. an error. Because, like, testing it, and this is legitimately within the first 24 hours of the beta even being out. And this is us kind of stress testing. And, like, I think this beta is going to get more iterative updates before the firmware actually goes live. Cause that's kind of how they did it on PlayStation. Yeah. They'd drop the firmware and they'd be like, okay, here come these new features. And mm-hmm. like, at first it was a little rough and then it'd get back together. And then, I mean, that's how betas work in anything. If you're iOS beta testing, if you're Android beta testing, anything, if you are, testing beta testing anything you pretty much get how the gist of how this is going to work yeah um i know there's a cool other uh, amount of features that was added to the beta aside from discord um i know the the wireless updates you can do now instead of having to plug up your controller to your system it'll just update wirelessly thank god oh my god i i don't mind hooking it up it's kind of like you know have this I want to say I don't mind it because it's right there. I have plenty of I have plenty of chargers. I could just my just cable boom, that boom. is hooked up to my PlayStation is like. See the flight stick is right there, and I'm like I'm lazy to unplug that thing post Tekken Tuesday, so it's whatever. <laughs> but uh, but no, overall just having that wireless that's dope. Um, and what were the other? Fe- there was a cool amount of features that was added to this beta. I was like, I had no idea about this because yeah, they had playtime. Shining. Yeah, thing. Discord is like the big shiny thing, but even using yeah. the UI, like the home screen, got a lot of improvements. Uh, I haven't noticed anything in the library, but they added like playtime and percentage indicators on like your progress in games, as just mm-hmm. like in that little live area when you first. Uh, look at a game and it shows now consistently. I don't know if this is from the last firmware update, but it has like pick up where you left off states Mm. for pretty much every game. I'm wondering if the next one's going to be the one that gives us quick resume. Let me see. Oh, please. Yes. Um, I'm looking at the, at the PlayStation blog right now. Uh, one of the cool things, um, you'll now be able to manually upload uh, your game captures to the PlayStation app. So, um, so right it's now, no longer you... automatic? So it is, but the thing is, um, with the automatic feature, it only holds your past 14 days. But if you go back to further to stuff further back along, you can now uh, select that and upload it to the app so you can do whatever you want to easier. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's dope. Uh, variable free uh, refresh rate supports for uh, 1440p. Right, and I know that was something like a lot of people were early on in the PS4 because it didn't even launch with 1440p support. We had to get yeah. 1440p support, and now if you have a 1440p display with variable refresh rate, which I don't know if you watched any of the tech breakdowns for Monster Hunter, but... Uh, Monster Hunter Rise, their digital foundry thing. Apparently, the game's designed for 120 FPS. So, even if we put our games, like, Mm. if none of us... Because I know my primary monitor is 4K60. 
like it doesn't go over 60 hertz like even on my pc where i can run stuff at higher frame rates i don't really get much of a benefit from that mm-hmm. but uh not having variable refresh rate was a huge thing and not having 1440p support was a huge thing it got both of those things over time and now it's getting both of those things at the same time right (laughs) yeah this is a it's a pretty meaty beta um just for all the new features getting added on so good just (laughs) i know i know it's a thing that like we'll always bitch about where my themes at (laughs) <laughs> it ain't happening, bro. God damn it. I need folders, honestly, but I really mm-hmm. don't feel like themes are gonna happen. I know the way the way that title cards work on a PS5 is like the moment you swap to anything, that is the whole ass background. So whatever your theme might be, it might. I want my I want my cars to look cool, bro. You can't throw all this Persona Five stuff at me into the PS4 life cycle and then. Not ha- let me have something scratch. Ah, oh, come back. <laughs> I mean, I, I had insane bit, themes know. on my <clears throat> PSP, on my PS3, on my PS4. So, but it's just the way the UI is designed. I don't think, yeah. that, like the Switch UI, it makes a lot more I've sense. Lost hope right. that we'll ever get anything Switch theme related. That hope died three years ago. <laughs> We're going into year six, baby. No theme. It took them five back. years to activate Bluetooth, so and they're still selling new themes for the 3DS, and the 3DS eShop is about to shut down. Right. So <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Right. Yeah. Weird Nintendo yeah. decisions aplenty. Weird Nintendo decisions, but. Nintendo does what Nintendo does, and it works for the most part. But damn it, damn it, just, just be, be better. Where's that Splatoon energy at? Where's that new, that new... In Splatoon the making bigger? of the games, that's the problem. All of the, like, fresh You're blood right. and new ideas are making the games. None of them in that tech side of making... Right, <laughs> make it, making it, none of them are on the hardware side. Yeah, you're right. You're All right. the creative people from the hardware side are now definitely working on games. Absolutely. Right, let's see. And so, I know we we talked about Monster Hunter a bit, and uh, I see you put in notes this 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 old thing that we we did collab with uh, our squad sessions. So uh, we were talking about this a little bit before recording. It will come back. Yes, squad sessions eventually. will return. For <laughs> if you know, you know, squad sessions podcast. The collaboration of Rusty Rupees and Cheesy Controller will return. It will. It is not a as dead brand. That theme song is too fire. If the theme <laughs> song is too fire. The logo's fire. Right. Like we we will use these assets. It's just definitely the the start of Rise for all of the. So first of all, anybody who's played Monster, this is a blanket statement right now to Monster to people who played Monster Hunter. Put I'm trying down. to get the listeners of Table Cheese to play Monster Hunter. So. Like. If, if anybody you have, have played, heeded my words. Right. <laughs> if you have played Monster Hunter in the past, whether it be old school Monster Hunters, more than likely World or and Rise, if you played those games, but you played by yourself, that's why you stopped. I would tell you right now, yeah. that's why you stopped playing, is because you played by yourself. You probably had a group of friends you played with. They trickled off, so therefore it was just you, which means... You played by yourself. You stop playing. I can't tell you how many people I'm playing with right now who either have never played Monster Hunter, stopped because of that same reason, and then just let them know, hey, join one of these discords, whether it be the cheesy discord or Rupert. Join one of us. There is plenty of people that you could hop on and hunt with because once you play with friends, it is a, an entirely different game. It, there are four players in a hunt for a reason, and it's because that changes the entire game. Like you could think that it's too easy, you could think that it's too hard by yourself because that AI is different. When you got four hunters and the monster bounces between those four, that changes the game, mm-hmm. and it makes it makes a difference. Monster Hunter, good. And now on the flip side of why we probably didn't do SWAT sessions as much at the start of Rise is because Rise, at launch, was fun, but bad. (laughs) 
Well, the thing was, it got hit by the pandemic. Like, that was, it was, like, one of those, like, oh, yeah, this is definitely, like, by the time it was all said and done and we got, like, the version that we're playing right now on PlayStation. Do you remember what month Rise came out in back in 2021? I want to say, like, March. That explains it. So. (laughs) Fiscal year. (laughs) I was just like, I'm not throwing the pandemic in this one. I was just like, when did it come out? If it was in March, that was to close out the fiscal year, and they wanted that bank. And Monster Hunter Rise made bank, continues to make bank. Yep. Congratulations. What did they get? 12, 20, 12 million. 12? 12 million. I mean, 12 Rise. million is still insane. It's, it's huge. Like, <laughs> I think within the first three days, it hit 4 million. So... I already know this uh, PS5 and Xbox um, versions, of course, just bumped up that number even right. more. Because um, the community for Monster Hunter, I, I'd i say, is primarily on PlayStation. Like, I feel like it might be shifting somewhat towards PC just because of how, like... I don't. I don't. I think people play on PC because pretty, pretty and good. But at the same time, multiplayer-wise you don't see them hunting on PC. Very true. I feel like if all of us, because all of us, for the most part, have the capabilities, we just choose not to. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, PC work good, but also, (laughs) the Switch is right there, and now it's on the thing that I actually play on with my friends. Let's go, so. I can wield my dual sense. Yeah, but... But the piecemeal way that Rise was launched with its main story into its finishing content was not good. They treated title updates as finishing the game, and it was it was very noticeable. And right. the event quest compare the thing was for us personally, World was such a high bar. <laughs> right, World came out and had <laughs> so much more content day one that, like us working through it and playing world the way we played world early on mm-hmm. like, the title updates were consistent and mattered the monsters that did show up from those title those title updates mattered the armor was cool it ad- added the, the, the pickle being the first monster being introduced post game like I, back then i was telling y'all Y'all don't know about the pickle. He about to he about to fuck up everything. And then and you see did. the world pickle, and it's like, yeah, it's scarier you know, than he was demon. before. <laughs> look at this thing. It's a goddamn demon. I love it. But world had consistency, and the way it spread out its title updates worked well. The event quests were meaningful you felt like when they came out with event quests you wanted to do those Mm -hmm. it's just like oh here's this money quest here's this for this cool layered armor here's this for that and that's how rise Rise is now on playstation kind of well i mean the well we have all the event quests so now (laughs) we get to we don't have to wait each week to see stickers and that's the thing that pissed us off at the start was i don't want to I don't want to hunt this this Apex Zenogre for a damn sticker. <laughs> now <laughs> I'll hunt an me... Apex Zenogre because I need to hunt Apex Zenogre in general, and I'll get some stickers for it. You don't really need to hunt an Apex Zenogre. It's just because you want to. That but was don't my problem. the Apex my give problem you Apex. outfit vouchers, right? I th- it was. I need not enough drip. For, uh... <laughs> Man, we already know once once uh um, sunbreak. sunbreak. Oh, yeah, once that yeah. hits, then we got that drip, right. bro. <laughs> so right now I'm like grinding up my hunter rank. I'm like at forty six. My next milestone's fifty. I don't I just hit seven. <laughs> you just hit... Yeah, you're I taking it slow. Seven. We like it seems mm-hmm. like the more seasoned because I took <laughs> sunbreak slow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I definitely went harder on Sunbreak, uh, just because it had so much more that I wanted. Well, between the monsters, like the switch skills that they added were cool. Um, the event quest, like at first the anomaly stuff, I was about it. Now I don't care anymore. Um, it's it's it gives me the same feel. Not so much as Rampages, because I think it's there. It's a better system than Rampages. Oh yeah, definitely. But it's, it's also it's post game. It is it definitely is. like just. You it's want just harder, right. do hard shit, and I'm like, all right. But um, overall, 
Like, I think... How do I want to put this? It's like, I'm I'm taking Rise slow right now because I don't want to feel the same way I felt about Rise when it first came out. Which was, it was fun until. Like, I don't want that feeling again. I want, well, like... My thing is, I'm grinding up my money. Like, I have the armor set I want for the most part. Okay. I have the weapons I want for the most Ooh, we, part. We broke right now, too. Oof. Right, God, so that's new, the thing. Yeah, it's new like, monster like, Ooh, oh. we broke. <laughs> It's like, oh, you need to hunt something in low rank? I I legitimately, I'm on my shit again of doing all the quests in the game. So I've done all the low rank hub quests, every single one of them. And I was like, all right, that got me a little bit of decent money. Had my meow scenarios out, had my submarines working, checking right. my Kahoot nest. Like, so I'm just trying to go into Sunbreak with some money. Like, just have me like a solid nest egg of Zenny. Because we know Sunbreak's close. Like, it wasn't like... Because when Rise came out, we didn't know how far out the expansion was. Yeah, but we like, know spring 2023, so... April like 28th is out, my prediction. I, I, I agree with that. And so we know we're getting Title Update 5 in April as well. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's like, okay, if we... it they. The with this recent um, announcement, they did exactly what I thought they would do. I'm like, either they're going to give us the day for Sunbreak now, or they're just going to be, hey, by the way, <laughs> it's out on these things, and Sunbreak is still coming. So here's what I'm, I'm thinking. Just, ah. is Because the presentations have been early in the month, and the title updates are dropping early in the month. Every single time they do it, it's it, because yeah. it's... In post rise, it was like, all right, we're gonna say something in December. Wait till December thirty first, and it's like, okay, we said something, <laughs> and it comes out next week. But I feel like right. all the Sunbreak title updates have released towards the middle of the month, so I think yeah. early April we get the presentation detail on the title update. Mid April we get the title update on Switch and PC, and then April twenty eighth. I'm putting my pin in that date. <laughs> That Do you think they will drop everything like yes. they did? You think so? Yes. I, I, There's not really a reason to stretch it out any longer because, honestly, it's just going to hurt your player base. Because, like, that's why drop the way dry, Rise dropped on PlayStation and Xbox is so good. It's because... You there's a lot a there's game. a yeah it's a complete game <laughs> with a good chunk of content there for yeah. you to get into yeah yeah i feel that like i i hope they drop with everything um i just like as much as i like the roadmap for sunbreak i also like hated it it was boring it like it was boring to me because i think after we got the when they announced the risen camellias i was like fuck here's the trend <laughs> Right. Here's here's what we're getting, which are basically arc tempered monsters. Let's let's be fair, they're they're arc tempered elders. Right. And it's just like uh, arc tempered right. afflicted elders. Right. And it's like, man, we gonna get all these hoes and a random month. I'm just mad that they did our boy Gosharog dirty. That's that's. They that's, did Gosharog and Tetsukabra. The... Tetsukabra's been getting Tetsukabra got hoed so much harder than Gosharog, like. Tetsukabra has been getting hoed since before Gosarog was born. But Tetsukabra, as much as I like that monster, we were going to stomp it out at the start of the game and never look back. But That great sword. Yes. This is also... <laughs> the like, great sword. It, it's still a Tetsukabra. That's like low rank early monster. Even high rank, that's like your first two, two star quest in that area. Gosarog is a beast. <laughs> <laughs> Gosarog right. is that guy. That we didn't get a black a blackbird Gosarog and it's a travesty and we got this stupid what was it ice somnicanth yeah nobody ice likes somnicanth Gosarog's cool as shit fire Almadron. they really just picked like the ones that didn't need it we didn't get a tetranodon we didn't get a Gosarog. like they we, didn't we... get a tetranodon bro we should have got <laughs> tetranod I I'm okay with the Almadron. I'm cool with the Almadron. At least I... they did something in, kind of interesting with Almadron. Because, yes. like, Almadron's armor look cool. That's why Almadron's... I love Almadron really... as a monster. Like, as a design, as an armor set. Dope. 
I hate fighting him. I hate yeah. fighting him. I hate, hate him. They he, could have also not done Pyro Arachnic Hideki's whatever. Right. That whew, that one was bad. Mm-hmm. So like, we had I mean, a fire cool spider, too, and we're going to make it more of a fire spider. Now it's a splody spider. <laughs> Shows how little I've fought and cared about what the... F- you know what we would have been fighting and caring about? Ebony Odegaran. Black Fur Gotharog. The, didn't Tetsukabra have a ve- uh, deviant? Yes. So yes, it did. It that would that's like on the same level as like Apex Ezra. So, hey, I, I would have taken it. Right. That Mitsu was cool. Um, of course, Gold and Silver Wrath is always fun. Lucent Nargakuga was a good start. Like it's, I feel like the roadmap started good, and then right. it's like now here's all the same Elder Dragons, with right. a little bit of with a sprinkle of new, right? New move that's gonna hoe you, right? <laughs> here's Velcana. It's still new, but but it's new here. You know, you you hunt you world hunters haven't fought this. You know, Look, uh... it's in the RE engine now, so I that's the thing that has me most excited for the next like console monster hunter is the fact that it's going to be on the re engine and it's gonna go fucking crazy like i i don't i don't know what they could do that will kill hype for how i feel about the next monster hunter game would be unless and i brought this up to the boys the other day right and got me seething like i was upset I was like, what the fuck? I was like, well, how could you even say something like this? So what I said to <laughs> As a friend. As a friend. Hey, man, I have to bring up the, the, the possibility. The, the scant possibility that this next Monster Hunter game is another just only on Switch. Like, it's a possibility. Monster Hunter and, and Nintendo have gone hand in hand for the better part of a decade, damn near. So... <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, it would be did a they... terrible, terrible, terrible business decision. Right. Terrible, terrible. But it would work because clearly Rise has sold 12 million copies anyway. It might have been bumped up. I only think that this the PS5 and Xbox like maybe bumped it up a cool mill, maybe two. Well, I the thing is, Rise has had a lot of time. March 2021 to February 2023, it's had a lot of time to be on the market and get recommended and have Mm -hmm. people try it out and sell and sell and sell and sell and sell. The only mistake they made is not having a boxed version of the Xbox and PlayStation version. Because having that shit on a shelf next to Monster Hunter World, like somebody who liked Monster Hunter World, oh shit, uh, but it isn't yep. like podcasters isn't as plugged in as us oh shit i didn't know there was a new monster hunter yeah buy yeah, it yeah, yeah. pop it in like i absolutely agree i absolutely agree like is a as a quick business decision it makes sense that there wasn't a physical version like they're just like that pc version put it here do it now make it as cost efficient as possible are we gonna print copies fuck no spend money on that no just put it out on the, just put it out in the store Everybody will love it. Can but it, it has been having pretty good homepage placement, so... Yeah, it has. Yeah. That's the thing. And, it... uh, and, I mean, it might just be because we are so plugged in that I'm seeing as much as I'm seeing about Monster Hunter. But mm-hmm. I feel like I'm seeing it on the store as, like, hey, new releases, topping yeah. your country, like... Yeah. And even, like, I think just it... Um people seeing it on another console like one of my uh one of my friends he hit me up because after rise came out in here you know now he sees it popping up on my feed and he's just like how's monster hunter dog have i not (laughs) preached to you it's great and now he's playing it and he like texted me earlier he's like i need help with the rampage (laughs) but but he gets it now he like tried it a little bit by himself and he's like it's okay hunted with us for a bit and he was like okay all right, this is kind of cool. And I'm like, there it is. Right. Just... The spark. Mm-hmm. All it needs is the spark and a squad to hunt with. 
damn it. I don't care what you solo hunters say. You're boring. You're boring, right. and you need to hunt with other people. You're not a bitch for doing it by yourself. You're not if you don't do it. If you do it, that's how you, the game is multiplayer. It's fine. Right. It's you fine to play with other niggas. God damn. I just almost accidentally hit transfer to console on <laughs> the current <laughs> Discord call we're in, moving Windows around. But my PlayStation's not even on, so we're good. All right, so the one thing, and I pre-ordered this game in December. It just got a demo on Switch and PlayStation, and you actually have history with the series. Like, I, this one sub-series, I, I saw it. I was like, that looks cool. That looks awesome. That looks amazing. But I never really got into playing any of these games we got the demo for theater rhythm final bar line on playstation and switch i actually want to try it out on switch i'm definitely not um, pre-ordering and getting this super deluxe edition off bat like i did on playstation but i'm going to get myself a physical edition for switch and i've already pre-ordered that super duper whatever most money on playstation already yep the um, 105 dollar edition of that game I, I right. bought that game knowing mid February I would not have a hun ex spare hundred dollars. Bought it around Christmas. So it's like, all right, I got gift cards. Go make this yeah. money stretch. But yeah, so I've played this game since when it first came out. So I didn't realize that <laughs> that on the the first theater rhythm was one of the twenty fifth anniversary releases. Like that was that that was that like celebrate a celebratory title. And now we have 35 years of Final Fantasy with Final Bar Line. And just see, for me, growing up, I didn't play Final Fantasy like that until 12. And so there's there were so many, even by that point when Theater Rhythm came out, that Dissidia, like I'm sure for you, like was your introduction to so many different oh, yeah. characters, yeah. so many different songs from the, different, from the series. Mm -hmm. And just like, these are amazing. And so I was already, I already liked rhythm games and everything like that growing up. So I'm like, ooh, a Final Fantasy rhythm game because this music is fire. And so around that time, that's when Lightning was still new. That was still like, <laughs> Lightning was the new freshness. So all of the 13 songs were like that. Hey, 13 music. And so now seeing how far, how far it's come with fucking over 500 songs being in this game. It, it's having insane. multiple think, series like because for me on the 3ds it was just kind of one of those things of like yeah i hope it goes on sale never goes on sale and it's yeah. like i don't know if i can like the amount i'm playing my 3ds what i'm playing on my 3ds like it just never had its opportunity to be like one of those things i interact a series i interacted with but mm -hmm. now having it on playstation and having Final bar line. It seems like this is the culmination of ten years of this series. Absolutely. Which still total. What it's three games total, right? Yes. It was this theater will be the rhythm, game. curtain call, and final bar line. Mm-hmm. So, it's like the demo um, that came out is going to be able to transfer over to the main game. Yep. Um, thirty songs playable in the demo, and it's like thirty sounds like a lot, because. <laughs> The first game had over 70 songs, and so this demo has 30. That's already damn near half of what is entirely in the first game. So it's like, damn. And like by the time I was done playing all the songs, I was like, fuck, I want more. <laughs> I'm right? ready for more. Give See, me more good music. I played, I went in, went straight to 14. Absolutely. Then same. went from 14 <laughs> to 7. Then from 7 to 13, and then from 13 to 15. And then I was like, all right, they still have 2 and 5 available. And I had one unlock key, and I was like, I'm going to just stop here. Because <laughs> I want more of all of those stages that I played through beforehand. But I'm just going to wait for this game to... Because we're only a couple weeks out. We're less than mm -hmm. 2 weeks away yeah as of recording so i'm really excited for it just like the 
the fact that it's going to have near music. It's going to have like other near live alive octopath romancing saga legend of mana fuck if it there's so many different just square properties the world ends with you right that the it's world just like, with, like hey we know you like final fantasy music but also we there's have a also lot of fire square <laughs> right yeah there's fire um, square enix music coming from everywhere not just i'm final realizing fantasy. now and i'm kind of upset that i'm just now coming up with this realization where the fuck is my kingdom hearts music you just got Melody of no. Memory. No, no. You just got no, a whole no. Kingdom no, Hearts no. music I need game. it here. You I just need it got... here. It needs to be with the rest. I know there's a whole ass game. There's I a whole... I... See, Darren... here's the thing. Here's, here's, here's my thing. Here's, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. It just needs to be one song. Only one. Maybe. It needs to be the new, that song that they use from the trailer for. That's it. Yeah, it's represent- well, I could see it because there are still question marks. I think we're going to get 16 music in this. There's the possibility that Kingdom Hearts 4. We I, could it get- just has to be one song. It doesn't have to be a fucking playlist because abs- you're absolutely right. <laughs> Melody of Memories is not that old. There hasn't been any recent Kingdom Hearts since that game. So just just put the four song in there. That's it. That's it. That's all I want. That's it. That's it. But... Is the four song in Melody of Memory or no? No. Okay. Um, four wasn't announced by the time that was released, so and there hasn't been any kind of DLC. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, but we know we got like a roadmap because we not only are we getting a shit ton of songs the day Theater Rhythm drops, like there's a roadmap of DLC for that mm-hmm. already ready. With those yeah. question marks that are super tantalizing, like I'm like I need 16 music. I need that. Uh, trailer music where it was the name oh, of the, the, the yeah. name of the icons yeah uh, oh i need th- i need to play that in theater rhythm mm, so <laughs> so i i have the habit of going through my playlist and i'm just like mm, final fantasy music boom puts on and i think just over time and i i, I was in my car i think it was i was playing shadow bringers and that song was playing and i'm just like I don't care what nobody says. People who play video games can appreciate music in a different way. Because it's such a... There are so many different genres of music you'll hear in video games. And then when you hear stuff like Final Fantasy, then you like start hearing orchestras. You start hearing organ and stuff. And you just start... I just start noticing all the different pling plongs and different sounds and different instruments going on. And then when you get games like this that just emphasizes, hey, we also recognize... Our music is fucking great. Here you go. Just just enjoy the music and just enjoy the legacy of what we've created from all these amazing composers throughout the year. Right. Just, bro, like, Square Enix has some of the best composers out there. Period. Bar none. Right. Like, <laughs> period. Period. Like, there's, there's amazing components throughout the industry, but Square has... All of them, though. Like, come on. Like, under the umbrella of Square, if you're a composer that, like, your legacy is, like... If I see a composer and I'm just like, that game's good. Like, I don't... (laughs) I don't know who the director is. I don't know what the game's about. That their direct, their, that's the composer. It's good. It's good. Right. Good. It's it's going to be. There's at least one thing good about it, and it's the music. So, a. Oh, we're gonna get Final Fantasy Thirteen. There's right. one thing good about it. It's a mute. Uh, what's her name? Masashi Hamazu. I want to say that's the composer's name for Thirteen. Like Nobu Uematsu, Yoko Shimomura, of course Masayoshi Soken. The goat. wait, Shimomura wasn't Thirteen. No, uh, Shimomura was Fifteen. Okay. Yeah. I feel like, like you she... listen to Fifteen. I'm like, yeah, I hear Kingdom Hearts all over this. Oh, Shimomura music is a whole thing in Japan. This is not as easy as I thought it'd be to just mm-hmm. quick Google search. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm really excited to hop into that game. That was just a game I wanted to put on everybody's radar. If you have a Switch or a PlayStation, demos available on both. Uh, it's a PS4 game, so 
backwards compatible if you're playing on PS5, current if you're playing on PS4, uh, switches, switch. Like the load times were crazy on PlayStation. It was just like not having load times, but I could. Yeah, see. I think um, I think that was the only difference that like I had picked up when I was um, when I switched because I started the demo first on Switch and was playing that way, uh, and and then once I was playing on PlayStation, I was like. I think it's the load times. <laughs> I think that's the only thing that was really a difference. Like, compared to playing Melody and Memories, like, from trying the PlayStation to Switch version, fucking hated the control scheme for PlayStation. Like, I was like, I can't do this. My fingers don't work. This this is weird. Goes to Switch. Okay, this is how I'm going to play this game. But it's it's sim it's the damn near the same thing on both Switch and PlayStation. So you can use any buttons, triggers, face buttons, all that. So I'm just like, okay cool there's no specific buttons i need to push i just need to go with the beat make sure i hit the shit let's go so yeah the one thing i still gotta f decide how i'm gonna hold the controller so what i was doing because you'll need to hit two notes at a time i was hitting x and square when i so needed for that. me i do x in the right trigger okay and so like so like uh the majority of how i've been playing was on uh ultimate so like the red the red difficulty oh no i was playing on easy <laughs> yeah and i'm like expert standard for me and then I'll forward from there um but like some of the holds you have to do is like just one to two so it's like you literally have to alternate so i'm just like bow 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 and then if it's um if i have to hit uh two buttons at a time then i just use the triggers just oh. both triggers okay uh -huh. So it's like it's just a it's just a weird way of you trying to figure out what's comfortable for you to accomplish whatever these um, button commands are. But like I'm still I'm still trying to figure uh, figure out the best way for me because um, the arrows fuck me up. Once yeah. arrows and buttons come into come into play together, it's like oh this is a bad time. I don't like this. Well, it, you don't have to hit a button with the arrow. You just have to flick the stick. No, so there. So like I said, I'm playing on ultimate. So, so for me, it's like button, button, arrow, button, arrow, arrow, button, arrow, arrow, and it's just like super quick. So I'm like, fuck. <laughs> um, but it's it's just a matter of me getting used to that song for the most part, and that's just where like I'll be in a groove. And then too many arrows come at me at the same time, and I get fucked up. It's either that or having to, like, hold one of the buttons, push a couple buttons in between, and then you have to swap to another hold and do the same. It's it's a strange a, a, swain, a strange sequence of button pushes that I'm like, oh, this is stressful. I'm going to do it, though. <laughs> that's, the that's the rhythm game they gave me, though. <laughs> The one thing I'm sitting here looking at, looking at through this, uh, and I guess this can kind of be our last topic, uh, Square Enix has been really good at putting out demos. They have Octopath Traveler 2 coming out soon. Do you think we're getting a demo for that? Absolutely. How? Uh, what, what's its date? Oh, that's a good question. I'm just like, because I know it comes out this month. It comes out in February. Because the first game had, I think the first Octopath Traveler was around the time when Square was consistent in releasing the demo to transfer. Yeah, so February 24th. So if they keep the timing that they kept with Theater Rhythm. Give or take two weeks, so. Right. So I think by the 10th, a week from today, we'll know whether or not we're getting a demo. The 24th. We'll probably get, yeah, we'll probably get a demo by next wednesday yeah the 8th <laughs> next yeah. wednesday and then uh -huh. 10th probably ha yeah, everybody got, will um, be feeding it we got the theater rhythm demo on the first if that comes out on the i was concerned we weren't gonna get one i kind of was too but also i think just because of the type of game that it was i wasn't really concerned about having a demo to trent like i didn't think i was gonna need to transfer but My now you have a little bit of saved data. Exactly. Yeah. Now, now, now I got. I'm just like, look at those S's. Look, I, I did that already. On to the I next. Got so. a couple double S's on easy. Mm-hmm. 
I'm I ain't like, got a triple S yet. I would see people's screenshots on Twitter. I'm like, I'm not a monster like that. Shout out to DJ Physics. I had hopped into his stream. Um, he was streaming it last night, and I had caught him right as he was like, that was his last song of the night, but he had gotten a perfect chain on um on one of the 14 songs. What was it? Mm. Uh, what was that song? Uh, Hard to Miss. But I'm just like triple it. And it was on Expert 2, so it was just like, trying to get like you okay <laughs> but uh yeah yeah it's it's good uh but yeah i totally think we'll get a demo for octopath um outside of octopath is there any other square things in range aside from 16 because i think we finally get a break from square enix for a little bit now that i'm thinking about it unless Let's something see. else is randomly in the mix Let's see. Square Enix website. Uh, Life is Strange 2 is coming to Switch. Switch. Power Wash Simulator came to Switch and PlayStation. Uh, Stranger of Paradise is done. Crisis Core Reunion's out. Forspoken's out. Uh, They got Dragon Quest Treasures. That's still not out? It might be out. I, I... their website's not really great on got it <laughs> being clear uh, like a lot of these things are me sitting here looking at them and being like okay yeah uh, it's like romancing everything... saga is that out i want to say yes unless there's been a new one romancing saga minstrel song remastered tactics ogre reborns out Mm, Valkyrie yeah. Profile Lenneth did that finally okay yeah that's yes out. that came out in December okay so it does look like as of right now oh go ahead I there's a big one that we forgot the pixel go remastered on. fuck okay <laughs> I mean alright so like <laughs> yes but also that's like same time frame as Sunbreak yeah, it, it, April twenty eighth could be a banger if Jedi Survivor, uh, Sunbreak, and and the pistol. Re- oh my gosh, they Square already took my money for that collector's edition, so I don't care. I'm just waiting for it. Just give me. It's crazy they took everybody's money and do, don't even have a date on it. I, I w- t- see. So typically, <clears throat> when you pre order something from the Square Enix website. They don't charge you until it's prepared to ship. Like, until it's, like, getting closer to release date, that's when they usually charge you. Not this time, apparently. They said, fuck that. Give me money now. This is limited. We don't... Give us... You, give it. God damn it. <laughs> and I, I wasn't ready, because I didn't know they said charge me until the next morning. <laughs> Wake up. I oh, looked fuck. at my account and said, <laughs> that I have significantly less money than I had last night. Well... What happened? Whatever, that's money I get to keep in my pocket in a couple months, I guess. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but, yeah, aside from that, then, it looks like there isn't anything else until 16. So. Okay. Well, I mean, I got a backlog of just Square games that I need to get through, so. Who you telling, man? <laughs> Look. I'm like, I want to. <laughs> The itch has been there. Like, it's died down a little bit since the anime is on hiatus. But the itch to play near has re-sparked. And I'm like, hmm. What happened with it? How many episodes did the anime get into before? Three. three? Okay, mm-hmm. so it's just one that I haven't seen. And is yeah, it I on... haven't watched three yet. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, they said with episode four and the rest uh, until further notice. Due to COVID, which is... Okay. Haven't heard that one in. Oh no, a Japan! Year. It's still. Is it? Yeah. I thought they've been lifting stuff a lot. I mean, they did have... they lock it right the fuck back down again? Then. Well, no, they opened it, locked it back down, reopened it, but now it's like hella restrictions and like. Now it's mm. a lot more performative. Okay. Yeah. And so they're in the process of dealing with dealing with performative COVID 
countermeasure. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I like, like saw that. I was like, due to COVID nineteen. It's early twenty twenty three. What the fuck is going on here? We still we're still using <laughs> mid twenty twenty two. I hear you, bro. I get it. Twenty twenty three. Nani? <laughs> Who fucked up? <laughs> what happened? Something happened. I don't right. understand. And it's in Japan, so we're never going to get the story. That's the one exactly. thing. Exactly. Like, <laughs> so we there are so never many. Understand. <laughs> there are so many just like crazy industry stories we could get if we just like had a Japanese reporter just on the ground, just translating everything live asking people the right questions and getting the right answers and no like if we had a japanese jason schreier it'd be broken man it would be broken (laughs) oh my god i think so much bro so many companies would stop talking to that motherfucker (laughs) oh yeah well i mean jeff grubb has been in perpetual nintendo jail for like this is true (laughs) this is true (laughs) <laughs> it is what it is journalism it hurts alright well I think that was a solid episode 19 for table cheese Darren thank you again for joining me where can people find you I got mentioned at the start of the episode you can find me anywhere at XX Shadow Kami XX or check out me and the boys over at Rusty Rupees or Rusty Rupees with two Y's on Twitter because Twitter's some hoes hoes um, Thank you, brother. <laughs> um, so we stream every day over at twitch.tv slash Rusty Rupees. Um, currently, our boy Justin is streaming some Trails of the Sky. Check him out. Ha-ha. Um, but yes, um, find me anywhere. Hit me up. I'm a fun time. Uh, I'll, I'll just be in the PSN with the boys talking shit. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. You can follow me around the internet, cheesycontrollerpodcast.com. You can follow me in particular on Twitter at Anton63Xs. Uh, I'm trying to think what the outro is. I know it's keep it cheesy and take it easy, but I'm trying to think what the outro for Table Cheese is. D hosts this way more than I host it, so. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, uh, everybody in the FTO network, take it easy and keep it cheesy. Be easy, stay rusty. Bye. Bye. <laughs>